Hello everybody, this is Jennifer Cabral and I am coming to you from Seekonk, Massachusetts. I am very excited to be a part of this worldwide virtual crop and I'm going to show you a tip with this sketch on how to make this little back grid here. Um, you just need a few tools and we're going to use the Party Time Blue Paper Pack. I love this paper pack. It can be used for any kind of party. I'm also um, gonna use my tape runner. We're gonna use the scalloped blade for the new Creative Memories cutter. So you're going to need that. And another one of my favorite tools here is the center zero centering ruler. I love this, it's see-through. Um, I use it all the time now to make sure that everything is straight and in line and spaced out equally, which I will show you how to do today. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is pick a base paper. Now I'm choosing to use a uh, pattern paper. This is the one with the little flags on it. Here's the back, the happy birthday if you just wanna use the same paper as me. So I'm using the little uh, banner paper here for my base. Now, to make this square here that's gonna go underneath, I decided I'm going to use the navy cardstock. So I have one sheet of navy cardstock here, and that's what we're going to use to make the background square that the smaller squares will go under. So. I'm going to take out my trimmer and I'm going to take open up the housing and take out the straight blade and I'm going to put that aside and grab my scalloped blade and I'm going to put it into the housing. Now a quick tip on the scalloped, you want to pay attention to which way you want it to cut. There are two different cuts that you get depending on how you put it into the housing. So I'll put the scalloped mark on the right for right now and show you how that cuts. It's really just a preference of what you really want for your border. So I have a little sticky note here. I'm just gonna put it down. So this was with the um, scalloped marking on the right. And I'm going to cut it. And now you'll see it's almost like a little wave mark. So that is one way you can do it. Then, if you turn the blade and put it in with the scalloped marking on the left, you get a different look. So now you have it with little bumps. So these are the two different ways that you can decide. It's really preference on how you want your scalloped to look. So there's this one here, and then there's this one here. So I really like it with the bumps going out along the edge. So that's what I'm going to use. So I am going to keep my blade with the scallops to the left. So I'm gonna put it back in there, put that down. Now I'm gonna take out my little arm and make sure you remember that there's this little foot here so you can fold right under, and then you can just pop it right back out. That way you get your nice clean cuts. It's not leaning down and it's all straight. So I am going to take my blue cardstock, my navy blue cardstock, and to start, the first cut is an eight and a half by eight and a half square. That will be the background of that square. And I'm using a scallop still. So to start off, I'm actually gonna go a little bit farther than the eight and a half mark because it's gonna cut off a little bit when I do the next side. So I'm gonna go probably another eighth of an inch. So a little bit more than eight and a half to one more little eighth of an inch. I'm gonna put it down and cut. And you'll see I have my nice little, just gives it a little bit more decorative view. Um, I really like that and it's going to pop once I put it on the page. So now you're just going to rotate the paper. And again, 
go a little past the eight and a half mark, like another eighth of an inch and cut. And now I have my other cut. So now here we are, we're going to rotate it again. And now you can actually line it up right at that eight and a half mark and you'll cut off that little extra. It just gave you a little bit more room to make sure that you had the full eight and a half by eight and a half when you're finished. So there's that. And then again, you're gonna rotate it one more time. And again, you're gonna cut it right at that eight and a half mark. So when you're finished, it will be eight and a half by eight and a half. My paper moved a little bit. Just go back, there we go, super easy. So there I have my base square. I'm gonna move my trimmer out of the way. So again, it's eight and a half by eight and a half, and I use the scallop border facing the left. So there we have that. Now next, you have to choose some papers to make your squares, your smaller squares that are going to go on there. So you need a total of nine. So what I did was I took a peek at all the papers. There's beautiful papers and they all coordinate so well together. So I picked three of them. These are the three that I chose. So what I'm going to do now is stack all three together and we can make the next cuts all at the same time. So again, you're going to grab your trimmer and you're going to make sure you go back to your straight blade. So we're going to take out the scalloped blade and you're going to put in the straight blade. So I'm just going to pop that in before I make any cuts. I have my paper that is stacked here. My arm is out and it has its little foot out so everything is nice and flat. And the squares are going to be cut into two and a half by two and a half squares. So we're gonna put our paper in, it's all stacked nice and neat. And all we're gonna do is line it up at the two and a half mark. And I would go through twice just to make sure you made it through all three sheets of paper. So there we go, we have a strip. So now you can rotate it. Again, it's all staying together in one stack. And we're gonna cut at two and a half again, right at the two and a half mark. So now I have my first set of three squares. We're gonna line up one more time and we're gonna cut again at the two and a half mark. Make sure you go through a couple times just to make sure. And now you know you can flip it. And now you have different pattern papered squares. We're gonna do it one more time and then we'll have our nine squares. And now we have our nine squares that are going to go on our eight and a half by eight and a half square. So I'm going to push those to the side. Now the next part is really fun because you get to decide where you want your squares to go and which pattern paper you want to use. I'm gonna put this on the paper, my background paper, just cause it might help me decide which square I really wanna use in which spot. So I like how that scalloped makes the paper pop a little bit more when it's on the background. And then I'm just gonna start placing down my squares. You can figure out which way you want your triangles to face. And you can also look at your sketch to see which squares are going to be covered. So if you have one that you really like and you want to be really visible, you can put that like say in this corner here or on this corner up here because then you know you're gonna see that more than some of these other ones that are covered. Um, let's see. I think I'm gonna put that in the middle just because it's a little bit darker. I love this cupcake paper, so I really want that one to show. Now again, you can do this with any paper pack. Um, I just happen to love this um, birthday paper here and I have three boys. So this is perfect for me. So that's why I chose this one. 
I'll do another cupcake down here. And that, a little bit more brown. So that is how I'm going to put my, my squares. I think I'm happy with what I have. So now comes the fun part. You're going to grab your zero centering ruler and we're just gonna do a little bit of measuring here to make sure that we um, do spacing evenly on putting the squares down. So I know how I'm gonna have my squares, so I'm just gonna start by putting these a little bit to the side in the order that I have it. And I will start with my first square here. So I wanna start now with my zero centering ruler, and we are going to measure in on this blue one fourth of an inch. So I'm going to take the top part here, and I'm just gonna line it up with the top of the blue. So it's just gonna line right up. Now, I'm just going to slide it down until I just have one fourth of an inch. So it's still gonna be straight on the top and one fourth of an inch. And you can see that this blue line here will line all the way up to one fourth of an inch. So then I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of tape on here. So it's gonna have a one fourth of an inch here, one fourth of an inch at the bottom, one fourth of an inch on the other side, and one fourth of an inch on the top. So now what I'm going to do is I know that this top line here is one fourth. So I'm going to match this first line and the top first line, and I know that I have one fourth on each side, and then I'm gonna place it down. Put a little bit of tape back onto my second square, and again, one fourth in, and then one fourth down from my top square. So I'll have one fourth of an inch spacing right there. I'm gonna grab my last one, and again, it's gonna be one fourth of an inch up, and one fourth of an inch in. And then I know that I have my spacing. So there's that first row. Then you can line it up with the top again. You're gonna move into this next row and you're just gonna make sure that it's straight with the top and the bottom. And I'm going to line up again on the side of my squares, the one fourth inch. So it's all gonna be lined up. I'm going to get my next square. And I know that it's gonna be one fourth down. So we have one fourth down and then one fourth across. And then I'm just gonna line it up. And there's my second square. And then again here. Line it up again, and you should have one fourth spacing on the top and on the side. One more here. And then we'll be on to the last row. Now I have my last, so we're going to just slide this over, line up this end of the squares with that one fourth of a line on the ruler. That's why I like that it's see-through. You can see right down to the colors. Line up the top of the ruler with the top of the paper again. And once you have that all lined up, you can put down your last squares. So that's what it's gonna look like when you're all done. And again, you're gonna put your pictures on it after. So one last thing I'm gonna show you in the video is how I measured it to place it into the middle of my page. So there's a little bit more room on the bottom and a little bit more room on this side. So what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to measure in one and a half inches on the top and on the bottom. So what I'm gonna do for that is again, I take my zeroing ruler and I line it up at the one and a half mark. So that would be one inch. And then you're gonna line it right up with that zero, that zero line. So I'm going to do that. And it's in line with the top and it's in line with the bottom. 
And like I said, I'm going to do it at the one and a half. So I'm gonna put a little bit of adhesive on here. And it's really up to you on how much you wanna put it in or down. You can center it if you want to. Um, but I really liked with the, the offsetting because then I can do some journaling and a lot of um, embellishmenting later. So I'm going to, I'm in one and a half. Now I'm just gonna go down one and a half. So this is one inch and this is one half of an inch. So now I'm just going to place that down, make sure it's still all lined up. And I'm at the one and a half. And then just tap it down. So now here you have your base piece. There's so many different ways to go about doing this sketch. Well, I hope you guys had a good time. I hope you had fun. I hope you learned something new between the different kinds of blades, the way you put them in, your zeroing ruler. Um, I hope you guys all enjoy yourselves. I was very excited to be part of this and I hope to see you all soon. Happy scrapping.